All right, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the tidally locked Kerbin mod, which is being made by form user Ohio Bob. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks at into the game is an entirely new Kerbin for you to explore. And as the name does mention, this Kerbin is tidally locked with our system's star and that is awesome this mod radically changes the world that we live in in this game and i really like it it's pretty darn cool so let's uh, jump on over into the tracking station and have a look at our new Kerbin, which as you can see, like I said, is drastically changed with the world basically split into three different zones of habitability effectively, which I think is cool. Stat wise though, it's the same as before. It's the same 600 kilometer radius with the same 1G of gravity and of course an atmosphere for you to lovingly explore, but the terrain is just massively changed. As you can see here, it is just magnificent. I do love the three different zones of our new world. We've got the sun-swept, just lifeless desert half over here. We've got the cold, dark, lifeless half over here, with a thin strip of habitability in the middle, which is just amazing. Now, Besides, of course, the terrain, there are a lot of things that have changed, but there's also a lot that has stayed the same. Besides just the stats, we, of course, do still have our different launch sites, and they are actually in the same spot as before, but that does mean that uh, the Woomerang site and the Desert uh, site are are now on the cold, icy, dead side of the planet. Now, if you do also have Kerbal Construct installed, there's a new launch site that's been added to the light side to help balance that out so you have more than just uh, the one place right here to launch from in the daytime. Because, you know, these will never see the sun again tidally locked in all, which is pretty cool to have that option. I, of course, don't have Kerbal Construct installed, so I just have uh, the default bases. Now, there are, of course, a lot of things different. For instance, with the terrain changes, there's a lot less water on the world. In fact, the whole planet's now only covered in 13% water compared to the usual stock 52%. So, not as much fun for boat users, but still, I mean, pretty darn cool. And lots of new islands and such to still go and explore. Now, besides that, uh, temperature is both the same and different. Now, the sort of uh, north to south biomes along the habitable strip seem to be roughly the same, but if you are on the harsh desert side, it's going to be a lot hotter, and if you are on the harsh cold side, it's going to be a lot colder, which is all pretty cool. Along with that, we do get nine additional biomes for you to go out there and explore and collect science for, and that is pretty sweet. I really do love that. Here's the thing, though. It's not just Kerbin that gets changed. Everything has been changed to one degree or another. Most of the change changes are, I don't want to say small because they actually affect a lot, but they're little things. For instance, our sun is now 60% of the mass of the stock one and 14% the luminosity. I don't know why that was changed, but it has been. And because of that, the mod maker did want to maintain the same relative light levels on all the other planets. So all of the planet orbits have been reduced by 37.5%. So our entire star system is much smaller. And because of the smaller orbits, all of the planets go a little bit quicker in their orbital paths which is interesting, very interesting indeed. Now, besides just that, we do have a few other changes. For instance, Moho, as well as Eve, are now 
also tidally locked. Now as you can see here with Moho, as well as with Eve, their terrain and all hasn't changed. They are all still the same worlds, but they are now also tidally locked in position. The basic thinking is that the gravitational forces weaken, I guess, once you get past Kerbin, so that all the rest of the planets beyond Kerbin are not tidally locked, but everything from Kerbin inward is that being the thinking now along with all these changes because of these smaller orbits and many other things the sphere of influences for all the celestial bodies has actually gotten smaller and because of that eve and kerbin you are no longer able to get a synchronous orbit because you, there's just no point in the sphere of influence where you can get the right orbit for it. And all of that together makes for an odd trade-off. We have a really cool world here that I absolutely love. It's gorgeous, it's got loads to explore, and it's just all in all a cool, well-made planet. But the system in general has seen a lot of changes to making life a lot more difficult. Delta V, for instance, is going to be increased to get to basically everywhere. Uh, I, I don't know that 100% for sure, but that's according to the mod page. I haven't tested that because, well, generally I don't pay attention to Delta V. I just launch things with as many boosters as possible. Good times! But all in all... I think it's worth it. You've got cool launch sites on the far side of the world now that are just lifeless ice fields for you to launch from, which is pretty cool. I really do like that. The bases, I think, look quite neat on this side. It's almost as if you're on the moon, but no, no, you're just on the cold, dead side of Kerbin. And beyond that, if we go back into the tracking station, we just have such a cool view from this new world. I absolutely adore the look of this entire planet. It is magnificent and adds in a lot of new complexity to your playthroughs as well as a lot more cool things to explore. Like I said, nine new biomes for you to go and do science in. It's just fun. So if you're all right with some of the trade-offs there and enjoy a little bit more of a challenge, I'd say give this one a download. It is pretty darn neat. So if you would like to, you can check out the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this episode. So I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, uh, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.